Madison looked at Paul's face, unsure of what to do. Helpless, she could only wave her hand and brush the matter aside. Forget it. If it's too hard to talk about, then let's not talk about it, she stated. Paul had been close to Madison recently and was getting to know her character. So he replied, Mrs. Weston, if you have time, I suggest you talk to Mr. Weston. It would be in your best interest to ask him more about himself. Then he stood up and went to supervise the dining room renovations, leaving Madison to sit there and ponder his words. Ian was keeping a lot of information about himself from her. She knew this. She just didn't know why. She wasn't sure if it was because he was forgetting to tell her or because he didn't want to tell her. Madison couldn't help but feel a little uncomfortable. She took a deep breath. She and Ian didn't really know each other. For instance, she didn't know anything about Ian's relationship with Frances. Suddenly, her phone rang. Madison took it out of her bag and saw that it was Zach. Her face softened into a smile. She picked it up and called out sweetly, Hi, Zach. Zach seemed to be in a good mood. I was worried that after getting married, you'd forgotten you have a brother, he said playfully. Madison knew that Zach wasn't angry with her. It was a little noisy in the room, so she stepped outside and took the call on the balcony. Why'd you call me anyway? You rarely think of little old me these days, she joked. It was clear from her tone of voice just how much she relied on Zach. There was a pause on the other end of the line before he casually replied, You're married now. What do you need me for? Ian's being good to you, right? There was a nervous lilt to his voice as if he was afraid that she was being mistreated. Considering all the recent events, Madison hurriedly covered up her feelings with a defensive reply. What are you trying to insinuate? Your sister has just gotten married and is still in the honeymoon phase. Just say what you're thinking instead of beating around the bush. Do you not approve of my relationship? Zack realized that he had said the wrong thing, so he quickly changed the topic, putting on a cheery attitude. Uh, anyway, I was calling to ask if you're free this afternoon. Let's have a meal together. There's someone who wants to see you. Someone who wants to see me? Who is it? Madison racked her brain, but she couldn't think of any friends or relatives, even distant relatives who might want to see her. Zack kept his mouth shut, refusing to reveal who the person was. He only requested that she meet him at Lafayette Restaurant at 5 o'clock that afternoon. Then he hung up. Madison trusted him. After all, my brother wouldn't try to break up my marriage and set me up with someone else, right? She thought jokingly. Madison returned to the Pink Star Hotel a little early and changed into a yellow high-waisted dress. She slipped on a pair of white high heels and left for dinner. At the same time, she sent a message to Ian, saying that she was getting dinner with her brother. 5 p.m., Lafayette Restaurant, she texted. This was an exclusive restaurant, although it was said that it wasn't as good as the Griffin. However, it still had an excellent reputation. Reservations often had to be made a month in advance. When Madison walked in... She only had to tell the hostess her name before she was whisked away to a private room. It was called the Napoleon Room, and it was said that this was once a dining room reserved solely for debutantes to gather for parties. Just outside the window was a large courtyard. Sitting in the private room, Madison looked outside through a sheer curtain. It felt like she had traveled to the past. The restaurant, not to mention the room, was so magnificent. She wondered who owned it. She didn't have to wait at the table for long. Soon, Zack came over, but there was no one with him. Madison tilted her head to the side in confusion. Where is the person you were going to bring? Did you hide them? Zack reached out his hand and rubbed his head playfully, as he always did. But he pulled his hand away a moment later, seeming to have thought of something. Madison sat up and leaned against him. Whether I'm married or not, whether I'm 23 or 8 years old, I will always be your sister. Madison tidied her messy hair before asking, Well, where are they? Zack drank a mouthful of water and looked at her cautiously. Madison, you should try to be less impatient. I know it's because you get anxious, 
but try to find another outlet for your anxiety. People who don't know you think you're too impatient. Madison stuck out her bottom lip. She grasped her water glass and took a sip. A touch of sadness flashed across her lowered eyes. Does Ian think that too? She wondered. What makes you think I'm anxious? But of course, Madison was anxious. She was worried about her marriage, wondering why Ian had agreed to marry her on the spot if he didn't care about her. Suddenly, she heard a gentle voice greeting them. Her heart filled with joy as she looked at the doorway. The restaurant's waiters were waltzing into the private dining room carrying dishes. Soon enough, the small dining table was filled with delicious food. Madison's eyes were fixed on a tall figure coming in behind the servers. She looked over his shoulder to see a group of women clustered behind him, giggling flirtatiously as they admired him. Mr. Crawford, Madison called out sweetly. How long had it been since we last saw each other? Two or three years, I think. Madison had only realized just a few days before how long it had actually been. Jane Crawford walked in with a plate of mango fried chicken in his hand. He placed it in front of Madison and said, Try this. I just tasted it for the first time. See if you like it. Madison picked up a piece with her fork and put it into her mouth. An intoxicated expression spread across her face. Shane, she said in rapture, this is incredible. Thank you for sharing this with me. Shane smiled and reached out his hand to squeeze her shoulder. No matter how generous I am, I bet you don't want to marry me anymore, right? Do you remember when we were children and you chased me, saying that you wanted to be my wife? You told me to become a doctor because you wanted to be a doctor's wife. Shane chuckled, smiling at Madison, who choked a little on the soup she had started sipping. She smiled back at him with embarrassment. Zack reached out quickly and patted her back. He looked at Shane unhappily. Since you seem to remember that so clearly, why did you wait for Madison to get married before you came and brought that up? Don't you think that's a little inappropriate? Zack remarked. Shane could clearly see that Zack wasn't happy that he had teased his sister. He quickly begged for forgiveness. You're right, I shouldn't have brought that up. Let's eat. Madison looked at Shane and couldn't help but laugh. Shane, last month your mother called me and said that she wanted me to help you find a suitable woman. I happen to know two women whom you might be interested in. Do you want me to call your mom and tell her? Upon hearing this, Shane's food fell from his fork onto his plate. He turned his head and pleaded to Madison. Do you know how busy I am? Let's save this conversation for another time. I have two big cases to deal with right now. One is an organ smuggling case. The other is firearm smuggling in the black market. You know how much I'm juggling right now, and you still tried to use our time here to distract me with talk of dating? Madison was amused by Shane's desperation. When she was younger, she and Zach had always spent their summer vacations in the countryside. The air quality there was better. So at one point, Shane moved with his family to the countryside to treat his mother's illness. It was then that they met him. The three of them got to know each other and became fast friends. The bond they formed was tight, and their friendship lasted into adulthood. The Napoleon room was soundproof, but unfortunately, if the windows of the two adjacent private rooms were opened, it became very easy to eavesdrop. At that moment, next to Madison's private room, a handsome man was listening in. His dark eyes were alluring, and his lips were soft. No one dared to talk to him, not even Paul, who stood beside him. He was focused solely on Madison. How have I never noticed how cute she can be? Ian wondered. She proudly unleashed clever comebacks like no one's business. This man asked her to marry him. What does this mean? He thought incredulously. He listened to the voices on the other side of the wall. He knew that one of them was Madison's elder brother, Zack. The other was an agent from Interpol and a member of the Crawford family. He had frightened everyone in the world recently, and his name was Shane. After handing some things to Paul, Ian stood up decisively and walked toward the room next door. Paul turned around and left. He didn't seem to want to get involved. You're courting death, my friend. Clearly they want to be left alone right now, Paul thought as he scuttled away.
Suddenly, those in the dining room heard a knock. Someone was at the door. Everyone in the room grew quiet for a moment. They hadn't expected to be disturbed. Before Shane could say anything, the door was pushed open. Before Madison could see who was there, she heard their voice ring out. Sorry I'm late. Madison's seat faced the door. When she saw Ian enter the room, her mouth dropped. Why is he here? And what does he mean by sorry I'm late? Did someone call him over? Ian seemed to have heard everything that had transpired. He was looking straight at Madison as if she were the only person in the room. He walked straight over and sat beside her. He reached out to take her glass, and then he faced the two men in front of him. Casually, he explained, I just rushed over from the hospital. Madison might have forgotten to tell you guys. Again, I'm sorry I'm late. Without giving Madison a chance to respond, he turned his head and took a sip of her wine. Madison looked at Ian in disbelief. She had never seen him behave so shamelessly. How haven't I noticed this before? How could a man as dignified as Mr. Ian Weston do such a thing? What was he doing it for, she wondered. The atmosphere changed drastically because of Ian's interference. It was like the air had been sucked out of the room. In fact, it was a little difficult for Madison to catch her breath.